I love cycling. It's fun, fast, cheap, convenient, and is the best way to discover cities. A lot of my best memories in Japan were made on a bicycle. I had, for example, the opportunity to spend one day on one of the most beautiful bicycle roads in the world, the Shimana Mikaido, 90 kilometers between the cities of Imabari in Shikoku and Onomichi in Honshu. Eight hours of pure happiness that I could conclude with some sushi and a sento, a traditional Japanese bathhouse. But I also love to ride my bicycle every day, either to go to university or a train station here in Yokohama. I have a question for you. Who rides a bicycle here? Okay, that's quite a lot of people, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm actually not really surprised. Why? Because Japan ranks third in the world for bicycle model share behind the Netherlands and Denmark with bicycle representing 13% of all transportation. So before talking about bicycle in Japan, I propose you to, sm to make a small detour by the Netherlands to have a quick idea about what happened there to reach such an amazing number. Quite a lot of people in the Western world think that bicycle was always a part of the Dutch culture and therefore insidiously implies we could not export such a culture to another countries. Here is a photograph of Amsterdam in the 1960s. As you can see, even in the Netherlands, urban planners were considering the car as a travel mode of the future, and huge chunks of the city were destroyed to make way for automobile. In Amsterdam as well, the streets no longer belong to the people who live there, but to huge traffic flows. And such a motorization appeared in the entire developed world in only a few years and countless advocacy groups emerged in only a few years to fight against such drastic changes. One of them, called Stop the Kinder Mort, Stop the Children Murders, became very influential in only a few months and even had the opportunity to meet the government in 1972, a year after more than 400 children were killed in traffic accidents in the country. With a great fighting spirit for years, they eventually convinced the Dutch government to build back a comprehensive bicycle network. And then, even if the modal share of bicycle plunged in Amsterdam and other European cities from the 1950s to 70s, from 80 to 25% in Amsterdam, it is now slowly but steadily rising and cars are disappearing little by little. This fight shows the importance of bicycle infrastructure and policies in cycling decision. And today, about 38% of all trips in Amsterdam are made by bicycle. By comparison, it's only 3% in Paris, two in London, and one in New York. But now, well, what about Japan? There are quite a lot of issues with riding a bicycle in Japan. The main one is quite obvious the dangerous driving of automobiles and trucks. Even if most Japanese drivers are well educated, they represent a permanent threat. 80% of accidents involving at least one bicycle also involves either a car or a truck. And hundreds of cyclings are dying every year in Japan, representing about 15% of all road fatalities. The lack of bicycle lanes is also one of the major shortcomings for bicycle usage in Japan. They're almost inexistent, and the cyclists have quite often no choice but to ride on sidewalks, especially on huge and fast avenues. They only have the choice between taking the risk to injure someone on a sidewalk or to be injured or worse on the road. And the rules are so confusing that actually no one understands them clearly. The bicycle parkings are also one another issue. They're established through the country, nearby train stations, subway stations, as well as public and private institutions. But despite recent efforts, they're not quite enough. As an example, 
Here is a map of bicycle parking around Yokohama Station, which is the fifth busiest station in the world, with more than 2 million daily users. <coughs> and the red zone here shows where you cannot freely park your bicycle, let's say everywhere, or it will be removed in the matter of a few hours. And the small green dots are the bicycle parkings, representing only a few hundred spaces, a quite pay number compared to some bicycle parking in the Netherlands with more than 10,000 spaces, free for 24 hours. But besides infrastructure, one another issue is that most Japanese companies refuse their employees to commute by bicycle for several reasons, mainly insurance and also the fact that they pay for you for your railway commuting. This is a complete nonsense that pushes some commuters to do it in secret, parking their bicycle not too close from the office, or even take out gym membership close to their working place in the summer, so they can take a shower and change into business attire before beginning work for the day. And meanwhile, in Denmark, more and more offices and factories try to provide lockers and even showers to encourage the employee to commute by bicycle. But why? Simply because it's always a win-win situation where employees are happier, healthier, but also more productive and taking less sickness leaves. So, in such a situation, how come so many Japanese people ride bicycles? When we talk about the success of cycling, we usually refer to the Netherlands, Denmark or even Germany, but very little of Japan, which is quite often disregarded from the international debate. If we consider infrastructure and policies as key elements to make bicycle appealing, Japan has a serious delay compared to these three European countries. But let's widen this view a bit and let's consider the Copenhagenized Bicycle Friendly Cities Index, a ranking created according to 14 parameters that can be classified into four categories, not only infrastructures and policies, but also data and, above all, mobility culture. This ranking places Tokyo in 16th position in the last edition of 2019. But what is bicycle culture? What is social acceptance? And what are cargo bikes? So to answer these questions, we need to take a quick look at the history and current situation of bicycle in Japan. So let's start with the first step, the creation of a distinctive bicycle culture. The bicycle made its way to Japan in the late 1860s at the very end of Edo period. And at that time, there was a series of revolutionary reforms that depended on the transfer of Western technology, good ideas, including transportation. But not all modes of transportation were immediately accessible. Train was restricted to the rich and powerful, and bicycles were not only very expensive, but also socially impractical because in Japan, gentlemen do not sweat. But this vision changed over the next decades and the price gradually decreased, so millions of Japanese could eventually afford a bicycle. A few decades after, the bicycle was also the unsung hero of Japan post-war recovery. After the war, transport system was very slow to recover. Trains, trams, and buses were crowded beyond capacity and gasoline vehicles were all suffering from poor repair, bad roads, and gasoline shortages. It was the bicycle that provided valuable access to work, food, and contact with friends and relatives for millions of Japanese. Bicycles were prized possessions, as beautifully shown in the 1948 Italian movie, Bicycle Thieves. A few years after, the famous Japanese economic miracle depended not only on motorization, but also on increased bicycle ownership. A few years after the war, a sturdy one-gear bicycle with cargo basket in front appeared on the market, called the Mama Chali. <laughs> and the Mama Chali was the inexpensive, easy-to-ride bicycle that would transform Japanese men, women, and even children into a nation of bicycle citizens. 
However, a few decades after, during the 70s and 80s, the bicycle urban life was quite harder. More and more accidents and a strong competition for space between bicycles and cars on increasingly crowded roads and pedestrian paths. And at that time, the public space was also greatly polluted by abandoned bicycles everywhere, sometimes hundreds of them in front of train station. But more recently, with difficult economical context and urgent environmental issues, transform once again the bicycle in Japan. Cycling is now considered as a sustainable mean of transport, and it can provide a better quality of urban life. In addition to speed, independence, and convenience, bicycles now represent progress, equality, and even new technologies with electric bicycles and shared bicycles, providing new usages for everyone. But in the last few years, one of the major events was of course the earthquake on the Tohoku Pacific coast on March 11th, 2011. It caused major disruption in transportation system. Rare gasoline, traffic jams, and suspension of rail service have transformed the bicycle into a precious commodity once again. Volunteers and manufacturers sent thousands of bicycles to refugees, helping them to rebuild their life. And Tokyo and other impacted urban area also experience a sudden increase in bicycle sales, quite often until being out of stock. And this demonstrated the need for increased resilience in transportation to improve the social and physical re reconstruction after a disaster. And it might also be a valuable loss lesson for near future with less and less gasoline. So today, even if there is a huge influence of the density of major Japanese cities, with convenience stores, supermarkets, and proximity services everywhere, the reason for riding a bike here are rather basic. People here use their bikes because it's quite often the cheapest, the healthiest, the fastest, and the most convenient mean of transport. Meanwhile, in most countries around the world, cyclists are quite often considered as ideologists environmentalist or even unsuccessful people, not even able to buy a car, a big car. And this social competition is not as present in Japan on the road. Everyone can ride a bicycle here, men, women, kids, rich, poor, no one cares. But there is one another reason why there are so many people on bicycle here in Japan. One day, I was waiting at a red light on my bicycle in Kawasaki and I was surrounded by about 10 other cyclists and something struck me. I was the only man. So at first I thought that was a coincidence, but I decided to make some research. And <laughs> Japan is alongside with the Netherlands, Germany and Denmark, one of the only four countries in the world where as many women as men ride bicycles. In most developed countries, such as Italy and France, there are three or even four times less women than men on bicycles. And let's not forget that millions of women around the world are still fighting to be allowed to ride, to ride one. The bicycle was indeed called the freedom machine at the end of the 19th century. It's now offering an unfettered mobility to anyone willing to use the pedal power for 100 years. And this freedom machine helped to empower women in North America and Europe. And it has a similar impact on the tight social and physical restriction placed on Japanese women at that time. And today, despite hardships, Japanese women as bicycle citizens will come to play active roles in local and national political life. And the bicycle was one of the main tools for such emancipation. Today, Japanese women can even represent two thirds of cyclists in Japan in some age groups, especially young mothers. The American sociologist Robin Leblanc in her book, Bicycle Citizens, describes the Japanese society as divided in two speeds, the speed of taxi for salarymen and the speed of bicycles for housewives, 
describing quite well the unfortunate sexism that remains into the Japanese society today. So I'm asking you again, how come so many Japanese people ride bicycles? Because it makes sense. And the success of cycling in Japan teaches us three lessons. In order to put everyone on a saddle, we must consider not only infrastructure and policies, but also mobility culture, social acceptance, and providing a bicycle for everyone and every usage. We must overcome lack of knowledge and cultural barriers through efficient communication, and always consider informal aspect and human behavior to design successful, sustainable, and beautiful cities. Thank you.